Good day and welcome back to your daily news feed. The official announcement of the mayor and the city council of Fresno in California about naming October 14th as Shahbanu Farah Pahlavi Day. Shahbanu, after her mayor, she is Imperial Majesty Mohammad Reza Shah, and over the years had used her influence to work for causes such as women's rights and cultural progress. She was a patron of the arts and bought back several precious Iranian artifacts from foreign collectors. By 1978, she was associated with various initiatives and organizations such as Organization for Family Well-Being, which promoted nurseries for kids and working mothers. She also focused on works related to healthcare, culture, and education, and always had encouraged education among women. Even after her forced exile, she did not only have continued her duty as the queen and made Iran and Iranian very proud, but also has won numerous honors for her work from across the world. In a Twitter attack, the top IRGC official slammed Biden administration calling him the powerless U.S. president is unable to give guarantees and said without a guarantee the fate of the nuclear talks is clear. By comparing Tehran's current sanction to conditions during the 1980s Iran-Iraq war, Ali Shamkhani claimed, during the war soldiers at the front were defending and now nuke scientists will continue their legal nuclear activities. The top national security official also implicitly threatened to continue Tehran's nuclear program. The Islamic Republic has seized a Vietnamese flag oil tanker in the Gulf of Amman last month and still holds the vessel. Two U.S. officials told the Associated Press revealing the latest provocation in Mideast waters as tensions escalated between Iran and the United States over Tehran's nuclear program. Tehran's dreadful paramilitary Revolutionary Guard troops on October 24 took control of the MV Southeast a vessel that analysis suspect of trying to transfer sanctioned Iranian crude oil to Asia. At gunpoint, U.S. forces had monitored the seizure but ultimately didn't take actions as the vessel sailed into Iranian waters. The Islamic regime celebrated its capture of the vessel in dramatic footage aired on state television the day before the 42nd anniversary of 1979 seizure of the U.S. embassy in Tehran. In a special report, which mainstream media deliberately turned a blind eye to it, the Times revealed the personal representative office of Tehran's supreme leader in London was given more than £100,000 by the British government as part of its coronavirus for low scheme. According to the Times, figures lodged with companies housed last month show that the Islamic Center of England received nearly £110,000 from the coronavirus job retention scheme as the government for law grants were officially titled despite long-running disputes with Tehran. The center is a mosque and cultural office in a former cinema and bingo hall in Maida Vale, West London. It's a major center for Shia Muslim workshop, education and average. Tehran uses such places to amplify extremist Islamic beliefs against Western culture and export its Islamic revolution. Meanwhile, by stating that 2 billion Muslims had laid the groundwork for the establishment of Islamic civilization, IRGC top official declared, our revolution seeks to establish Islamic civilization in 21st century and today these capacities are available to create this great civilization. In the recent report, international monetary fraud shows Iran's foreign currency reserves increased from a low of $12.4 billion in 2020 to a projected $31.4 billion for 2021. Iran's foreign reserves in 2018 was $122.5 billion and in 2020 had dropped to $12.4 billion. Since President Donald Trump withdrew the so-called Iran nuclear deal in May 2018 and launched his maximum pressure campaign to restrict Tehran's oil exports and international banking relations, the Islamic Republic dipped into its foreign reserves to make up for the loss of oil revenues. But President Biden's policies have increased Tehran's accessible exchange reserves by 
$27 billion in under a year. In a tweet, former State Department Special Advisor on Iran Gabriel Norona said, Biden's policies have increased Iran's accessible exchange reserves by over a 750% increase in under a year. He explains that Biden have done through by refusing to enforce U.S. law and to put sanctions on Iran's oil experts and also by voting for the IMF's $5 billion reserve bailout to the regime. That is the plain fact of the case. Biden administration has increased the foreign currency reserves of the Ayatollahs. According to the news, the United States on Wednesday added the Israeli spyware company NSO Group to its entity list, a federal blacklist prohibiting the company from receiving American technologies after determining that its phone hacking tools have been used by foreign governments to maliciously target government officials, activists, journalists, academics, and embassy workers around the world. Washington Post reported, the move is a significant sanction against a company spotlighted in July in an investigation by the Global Pegasus Project Consortium, which includes the Washington Post and 16 other news organizations worldwide. The consortium published dozens of articles detailing how NSO customers had misused its powerful spyware Pegasus based on leaked targeting data the spyware from NSO Group was used to infiltrate devices belonging to a range of targets, including journalists, activists, and political opponents in 15 countries. The move could also raise tension between the United States and Israel, where NSO is a prized technological powerhouse. Exports of NSO software are regulated by Israel's Ministry of Defense, which must approve them as it would any weapon sale. And that was all for today. I'm Kate, and thank you for the privilege of your time.